So communication 150.50, Mr. Onishi, will you make the motion to amend? Okay. Um, may I make a motion to amend um, Bill 39 Draft 3 with the communication in one um, one five zero point five zero. Second. Seconded by Mr. Lagarde. Go ahead, Mr. Onishi. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, because the Pohoa office that was being leased will, well, hopefully maybe within the next couple months will not be leased anymore. So there will be extra funds in this account. And so well, what I wanted to do was, um, as previous council member mentioned about our DAE being so low and in case um, you needed to, you know, use the money within your district to purchase stuff or even like to purchase these chairs that we have all <laughs> wasted and it's all peeling off. I mean, so that's kind of stuff. And also if you needed to do like um, when you go, when the state legislature starts up the session and you need to go down and lobby, you know, it does become costly because of the airfare and especially for last minute tickets um, because you don't know every time when a certain issue is going to be coming up. And so you might hear it like one day, two days pro before the hearing. And so to purchase a ticket one, two days before that, you know, you might be paying like a hundred something dollars one way. And then if you go off and depending on what you're lobbying for the legislatures, you know, within your district or even island wide, you know, it could add up. But so this is just to add on a little bit more cushion for each council member. And like I say, it's just like transferring from one account, which we already have, to a different account. So it's not like we're adding on more money, like or we requesting more money from the taxpayers, okay? And so by doing this amendment, um, we'll be taking out $24,750 from the Pohoa office lease, and we transferring it to our DE. So each member would be added $2,750, which would be a total of $5,750 per year, okay, per fiscal budget. And then that would leave, I think that leaves like about um, 2000 I think $2,250, I think, for the rent to cover the extended time that um, they would need for at the um, existing POA office. Okay, so I ask for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Onishi. Mr. Elegan? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Onishi, how come you're taking away the point? I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> thank you for doing this, Mr. Onishi, and I appreciate the fact that we do need more money for a DAE. I have um, my staff drive into our office and she comes from Pohoa all the way to Hilo, then to Hilo to Pohoa. And that extra money will help out with that expense. And also all the related community expense that um, is incurred. So I really do appreciate you doing this. And for the public, I'm doing my best to try to move to actually, right now the Pohoa office is not in District 4, it's actually in Council Member Kern's district. And hopefully, with the help with the administration, we can move to the old police station and right in the heart of Pohoa and save the actually with this help us out with um, being more closer to the town and helping out the, um, the people there. Well, I just wanted to say I support this amendment and thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Lagan. Any other comments on the amendment? Yes, one. Go ahead, Mr. Onishi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, and just to let um, council members know, like, you know, in the past, um, I think our DAE used to be, I think, like $10,000, Mr. Chair, and it came down to like 7000 and then I think went down all the way to 2000 right? And so there was a decrease. But then this funding also can help when during the summer times, like now coming up, you can hire like um, students like from the colleges, you know, to do internship. So this money could help out also to help with your staffing. And like I mentioned before at the previous um, budgets was that this money can also be used to help pay for part-time staff to watch certain facilities or for sites. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Onishi. Ms. Ford. Yes, I'd like to ask Mr. Onishi a question. Where in the rules does it say you can pay for your staff salaries? 
to my understanding, um, this question would be to. I'm asking you. Yeah, but what I I never hired any internships, but then what I've heard that council members have hired. Well, that's okay. That's not the subject of uh, this particular amendment. But anyway, he doesn't know the answer, Ms. Ford. Okay, Go ahead. Thank I, you. Well, yeah, I'll I never give did. You, I'll give the answer then. The council rules uh, on DA would not allow for hiring of additional staff. You'd have to come up with something else. And so I don't want the public to have a misunderstanding of uh, Mr. Onishi's bill, which I happen to support, by the way. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Clerk, uh, the vote to uh, motion to amend on with communication 150.50. Ms. Yoff? Aye. Ms. Ford? Aye. Mr. Ligon? Aye. Mr. Kanuha? Aye. Mr. Kern? Aye. Mr. Onishi? Aye. Ms. Poindexter? Aye. Ms. Willie? Aye. Chair Yoshimura? Aye. Chair Yoshimura, you have nine ayes. Okay, motion passes. Uh, next item, Mr. Onishi. <laughs> Move, um, I want to make a motion to amend Bill 39, Draft 3, with a communication of 150.151. Um, Second. Second by Mr. Lagan. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, well, after the last discussion we had during our um, during this budget um, draft two, um, I guess at that time the Kohala um, video conferencing was together with the Ocean View one, and so um, I know Miss Willie was going to do something, but I what I wanted to do was give her an options to the council members of where we can get that money because I do support Kohala getting that video conference and with the expenses of what um, I had in here which is for um, the telephone which is going to be 2400 and then the computer equipment which would be $6,000 so the total would come up to 8400 but then I also noticed that um, Miss Willie also had put in um, I guess four hundred dollars for I guess office or um, I guess service um, clerks council services equipment. Um, no, I'm sorry, computer and office by four hundred, and then so would be eight thousand eight hundred dollars. But mine is only eight thousand four. So we could do an amendment or not. But then um, also what was happening is that she were gonna take out the funds from the contingency funds. But then I figured possible was from the um, ledge auditor, which is the contractual services, because uh, we when we had the ledge auditor, um, the temporary assigned or acting um, um, Lane Shibata, he mentioned to us that he had forty thousand dollars left over that wasn't being, um, I guess, allocated to anything, and so to me, that forty thousand. We could just take out like eight thousand eight hundred, and that could cover that one year of service for Kohala, and that would still leave him with at least thirty two hundred or thirty one. I mean, sorry, thirty one thousand dollars left. Okay, so that's what I was looking at. So um, it's up for discussion. I mean, you know, I would like to hear comments from Miss Willie. Thank you. Well, okay. Before we do that, can we bring Mr. Uh, Shibata up and because yeah. okay. I think it affects his budget directly, so it would probably be a good idea to have him. So, Mr. Nishi, to clarify, you're trying to take money from this year's budget to apply to next year's no. budget, or uh, it's for next year's budget because, like, oh, right okay. now, there's a surplus of forty thousand dollars that is not being news and and what was mentioned when we had the discussion about doing that um, elections audit he mentioned that the 40,000 was was like this extra money that he had um, maybe you can explain like you know from what you mentioned before at the elections audit that we wanted to do and where the funding was going to come from okay Lane Shibata acting legislative auditor um, what transpired this past or this fiscal year um, left us with leftover monies and um, part of that was we had uh, put in the budget for uh, an anticipated uh, county um, office of housing um, a Kulaimanu uh, housing project audit and um, our former legislative auditor uh, negotiated with the U.S. Department of Agriculture 
and they came to an agreement where instead of conducting you know that full-blown audit which we figured cost about 25,000 she brought it down to five so that came out of that um, expense there we also um, anticipated uh, the budget for single audit and our single audit this past fiscal year came out to two programs which was uh, $22,000. It's hard to anticipate how many programs um, that's going to be or that needs to be audited um, for the upcoming fiscal year. So that's why um, the current budget um, we have, uh, if it's the same two programs, the cost for those programs for this or the next fiscal year will be $11,500. So with that two programs, it'll come out to 23000 if there's an additional th third program, it'll come out to what, 33,000, 34,500. In the event that the Kulaimano um, housing project needs um, an audit to be done, we anticipate for another 25,000. So with that, um, our budget, the total would come out to $59,500. And your, and your current budget is 40? Uh, our current budget is 60, I think. 60? Yeah, I okay. think we raised it up to that. <coughs> All right. Okay, uh, Mr. Nishi, you still had the floor. Do you want okay. to? Yes, um, so you couldn't encumber some of that expense with this present budget for the for next fiscal? Without knowing um, how many programs or if we have to perform that um, Kulaimanu audit, um, it's hard to... Um, and then can't you use the external audit account to pay for that, like for Kulaimanu? Yeah, we have some um, additional monies in there um, to cover any kind of um, Yeah, next year's um, budget for uh, the financial audit would be like 271000 Um So what are you saying? So how much you spend so far then on that account? For, for this f fiscal year? Yes. We spent um, 239000 And so you have a balance of? 69000 69000 Yes. Okay. See, also what I, I, you know, why I'm taking, well, possible taking, getting money from the ledge auditors because <clears throat> back in March 9, 2012, which was the previous council, somehow the ledge auditor found $75,000 within her external audit budget or account to put to the food basket. So, you know, as a tes testifier mentioned before about how, you know, they beef up their budget or they, they pad certain accounts, I mean, to me, it, it can be where, like I said, this is only like $8,800, okay? And we heard from the last time at the council meeting or committee meeting about there was 40000 left over. And so I just look at, there's like a pattern, like there, like 2012, there was 75000 that was given away from their, from their um, section, right? This year, we, we hey, listening, there's like 40000 left over in just one certain account. Okay, so I, I just saying that, you know, it's a possibility. It's another revenue source where we can get that $8,800 to help pay for the Kohala, um, the Kohala um, video conferencing. And that's all this is being done. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Um, Mr. Shabbat, you wanted to add anything? Yes, I want to add that, you know, um, 
We're not implying that um, the Narcohala video conferencing is not important. Um, but we do, in our budget, um, we do plan for and anticipate, um, try to anticipate um, what it'll cost us for the single audits and any kind of other audits that come about. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ford. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, first of all, I will not support this bill at all because it's taking money out of your budget, Mr. Shibata. I need to alert the council that what has happened for the last four to five years is that every year we come into the budget cycle, Mr. Shibata and the previous auditor's budget is always attacked trying to drag money out of it. And the problem that Mr. Shibata is facing, as the last um, auditor faced, is because we do not know how many audits the federal government is going to require. The money must be there. Because if it's not, the only other place for him to get money is to come into the council's budget because we're all part of the legislative branch. We cannot support tens of thousands of dollars if you were to get eight audit requests. These, I've, I, I don't know what you call them. No, it's a single audit and there's sub audits underneath it. So, But we can't sustain that, which is why he has to put it in. Now, every year, um, there's maybe money left over because the past auditor was a great negotiator and Mr. Shibata is continuing in that vein. So we need to support the budget as it exists. They've done a really good job and the, the time that they had 75000 we had so few federal audits that year that she had the leftover money. That wasn't because they're padding their budget. It's because the great negotiations that had been going on in prior years. It would be it would be irresponsible to take money out of this budget not knowing what the federal government is going to do. And they can really slam us with audits if that's what they decide to do. So I, no matter what happens, I will not support taking money out of your budget, Mr. Shibata. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Ford. Any other comments, Ms. Willie? Um, yeah, I, I appreciate Councilmember Onishi's um, support for the North Kohala um, site. I think that there are really two questions here, and one is whether we do fund that site, and the second question is from where we get those funds. Um, so, and I think I just want to say on the, and this is really tied to my, the next, um, Communication 150.52, and I put in there that it, it would we take the 8,800 from um, contingency funds, and I, I'm really open to where the best place, what source there is. Um, but let me just say, in terms of the site, if you look at what's brought up for North Kohala, there's really very little in terms of um, providing for different. Um, programs um, or across the board and this is one where I've really tried to combine and multi-purpose something that's available and working with elderly services and working together with them it's a very active elderly um, group there and that are very interested and it would really be a great service I there's a difference in the amount. I think he is 8,400. I have 8,800. I'm fine going with the um, 8,400, so I don't want that to become an issue between these two. Um, in terms of, I do have some problem taking from another fund. I would prefer you know, going back to the carryover balance fund where right now we've got... Um, projecting, uh, I think that we really are, should be keeping a, a carryover balance of um, somewhere around 8% of our budget, which comes out to be about 16 um, million, maybe 15 million. So I'm not sure where to get the money. I'm open to that. I would appreciate support for having this. And, um, and so I'm just trying to keep the two questions separate. And I'm, I'd really like to yield to any other comments or suggestions from the council. Um, and um, not sure quite what the procedure should be. I'll look to Fresh um, what he thinks in terms of our two motions and how we handle that or any other suggestions. 
Miss, talking about? Uh, Miss, Miss Willie, you're asking a question I'm about... I'm asking just to <coughs> split them into or where, what funds we should uh, support for this and where should we should get the funding, what other ideas other people may have for that. And then second, a procedural question where really we have two communications on the same subject and the difference really between them is a $400 and I'm trying to say that's um, not significant to me. It's really the source of funding. So if anyone has comments or ideas on that issue, I would just appreciate hearing from other members of the council. I think what makes the most sense, Ms. Willie, is to just take the amendments one by one because okay. I think it, it is, they're separate issues because they come from separate sources. So okay. um, that's probably that's the fine. easiest way to do it. Okay, Mr. Kern. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I totally understand where you're coming from with this, Mr. Uh, Councilman Onishi, with uh, you know having the money being left over there. It is challenging being unsure what it what's actually going to happen during that year. Personally, I would be uh, I, I support the North Kohala video conferencing for one, um, and I'm okay to um, take it out of the, take it out of the other funds that we would have at our discretion. I'm I'm down to uh, put into that, so I'm open to that. I. I'm not sure how comfortable I am with taking it from the legislative order. Ba based on the past um, experience where there has been money left over, I feel good about that. It's just the unknowns. Um, so I'm, I'm really, we need to fund it one way or another with one of these two options we have coming up. And I'm curious to hear what any other council members have to say. So with that, I yield. Okay, Mr. Illigan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I, uh, I'm more comfortable in going in the direction of Council Mem Member Willie. Right now, I'm not comfortable also getting it from the legislative order. And I, I do respect the fact that you put this amendment in, Council Member Onishi. But for me, I'm going to um, support the Council Member from North Kohala and try to work with her in accomplishing that video conference in sight. Okay, thank you, Mr. or Ms. F uh, Ms. Ford, do you wanna? Okay, go ahead. I'd like to answer Margaret's question. She said she wasn't sure where it should come from and I've already discussed the ledge auditor, but I haven't discussed the fund balance. Please remember that when I went after the fund balance, I was called irresponsible, okay? So I would recommend not going that direction. What? Okay, so um, I think we should just kill this particular um, amendment and go with yours. $400 is a drop in the bucket. Um, you know, in my case, when I, I went after the money because I wanted to go after the foreclosure uh, delinquencies. Um, but, you know, the mayor went after the fund balance for I forget how many multi millions of dollars. Nobody called him names. But be aware that you will probably get called names. So I would recommend backing off of that one. Thank you. Miss Willie, oh, Mr. Onishi, you. Um, yeah. Thank you. Ahead. I just wanted to explain um, to council members, this is my fifth budget that I'm working on. And through the past five years, there's always been surplus in this ledge auditors, okay? And so that's why, through my past experience, that's why I did what I did, okay? So to let you folks know, it's just that for the past five years, and we've always, like, well, when had other former council member Ikeda, I think he took it down, like, he took one time 100000 out of their account, okay, for, for other things. But then, just to let you folks know, as of April 30, 2013, the external audit balance was $69,000 that they have in their account right now, okay? And then in the OCE account, okay, which is also included with this um, contractual services, they have $69,916.71, which they only spend 50% of their budget, okay? So there's another 50% still in there, okay? So just to kind of let council members know, okay, why uh, I'm doing this, and, and like I said, it's only $8,400 that we're taking from their account. And then, so if you add up the external and you add up the OCE, they have over $120,000, $130,000 yet. So it's not even like, a, it's only a small percentage of what I'm looking at, okay? But just to let you folks know what was the history about this, and like I mentioned before, 
in 2012, in March, they gave $75,000 to the food basket. So if you was really concerned about your budget, I don't think you'd be giving out this kind of money. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Onishi. Ms. Willie, followed by Mr. Kern. Yeah. Um, yes, so again, I want to thank um, senior member council Onishi, but um, I think I'm going to wait and support um, my communication and as I have it set up. Um, let me say though, generally in terms of the fund balance, I, do, I don't think it's irresponsible to be looking at that and weighing that when we're in the process of raising taxes and I don't mind being called names. So I'm not gonna worry about that. So anyway, um, so thank, I just wanna again thank you. I'm not gonna support it, I'll go with the other. I, I, I too have trouble taking from any department. I mean, I start looking at public works and why wasn't all this money spent for roads in limbo? You know, a million here and there. And I just think second guessing that this is something that we ought to be looking at these departments comprehensively the same along the lines of what Mr. Onishi is doing right now with each department so that in, again, in future years, we are not um, sort of doing stop, stop gap budget measures. So thank you. I'm not going to support it. And um, call me whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no name calling here. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Kern. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, may I ask Mr. Onishi? A yes, question? go ahead. Uh, Mr. Onishi, what is the, uh, do you have the info on you or at least uh, average of the last five years, how much on average is left over from the legislative order? No, I don't. No. But there always has been. Yes, correct. And that's why you're, ba that's, as you yes. said, that's why you're, yes. you're basing this in the last year was about my, 70. My, my, within my years that I was on the, you know, on the council, yes. Yeah, that, it, that's challenging. I mean, if there's always money left over, it would seem to make sense to use it because if we don't use it, we, we in a sense, lose it. And we're taking money from other areas where we, we could be making making a greater impact in our district and helping our constituents in that way, t such as um, with the uh, contingency fund that we have. So I'm really torn actually after hearing that, that there's, you know, that's there that I, I'm gonna actually support this. And if it does come out that we have um, uh, an issue with coming up with an audit, then we'll just have to sit down and, and, and figure out what to do. And um, I'll, I'll take some, anything out of my contingency and, and help out with that after making this decision here. So, thank you. That was it. Are there any other comments along <laughs> that line before we have to vote on this? Um, Anybody else yeah. want, willing to Mr. weigh in? Mr. I, I want to yeah, I mean, go with what the sense of the... We, uh, the sense is that we, we want to support the North Koala site. Or that, you know, we have that sense. Now, I, that's what I have the sense of everybody yeah. thinking the same thing. And I kind of was going to say pretty much the same thing that Mr. Kern was saying about the... The, the ledge hour. I mean, we don't we don't want to take from any department, but with the leftover money from the past several years, we don't want it to go to waste. So, I'm I'm leaning towards supporting this one. So, thank you. Okay, uh, Miss Poindexter, yeah. your first opportunity. I'm leaning towards supporting it also because, um, you know, if if history has it um, that there's always been leftover money in that I'm leaning towards that more than um, looking at taking um, on contingency. And contingency, just for the public's information, is not, a, not an investment into ourselves. It's an investment into our communities that are distributed equally in nine districts. So it is, because there was a, a public testimony earlier by Mr. Reese saying that, um, you know, it was for us and um, like a slush fund. That is definitely not what it is. And it is um, putting money and investing money into the community and working with our communities, which also engages us where we should be, is working with our communities in our communities. So I'm, I'm supporting this as it is right now, and we'll see where it goes from there. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, Ms. Willie, did you want to have an additional yeah. comment um, before we move to the vote? I just want to say I appreciate um, the other members speaking up because I'm going to go with the majority of the group. So thank you for responding. Okay, any other discussion before I make a comment? Okay, I'm going to close discussion and make a comment. Uh, y you know... This point's well taken, you know, both sides, right? And I, I, the difficulty lies, I guess, in trying to forecast um, what's going to happen. And so, uh, you know, my, my take on this is that, you know, we have a budget for a reason. We want to stay within the budget. And, you know, I, I, I have confidence in the legislative auditor's office that, you know, they set their budget with realistic expectations in mind and along the way try to save money, you know, and that shouldn't be penalized, I guess, in a way of... Um, trying to be more efficient. At the same time, you know, history is what it is, and so we can't, um, you know, detract from that as well. But uh, I will be voting against the amendment. Thank you. Mr. Clerk, the vote. Ms. Eoff. Mm. <laughs> uh, Kanalua. Ms. Ford. No. Mr. Iligan. No. Mr. Kanuha. Aye. Mr. Kern? Aye. Mr. Onishi? Aye. Ms. Poindexter? Aye. Ms. Willie? Aye. Ms. Eoff? Aye. Chair Yoshimoto? No. Chair Yoshimoto, you have six ayes. Okay, motion uh, passes. Next item. Ms. Willie, um, so did you want to go forward with your... Communication 150.52, or is that no longer? Yeah, I'll take that extra. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're on public record. Go ahead, Ms. Willie, if you want to make no. the... <laughs> I'll withdraw my communication. <laughs> okay, so communication 150.52 is withdrawn. Um, next item, Ms. Willie, 150...